I never imagined that my cross-country road trip would lead me to the silent hotel, a place that would forever change the way I thought about fear and isolation. My journey had started months ago when I decided to take a break from the hustle and bustle of city life. I longed for open roads and remote destinations, and I eagerly packed my car, ready to embark on a solo adventure. My route took me through countless small towns and picturesque landscapes, but as the sun began to set on a rainy evening, I found myself in a desolate corner of the country, far from any signs of civilization. That's when I saw it, the silent hotel. It loomed at the edge of the forest, a grand and imposing structure, its facade weathered by time and neglect. The neon sign that once proclaimed its name had long since faded, leaving only a few flickering letters that spelled the Sill Hotel. The rain battered against the windows, making it impossible to see inside. My car's gas gauge was perilously close to empty, and with no other options in sight I decided to seek shelter there for the night. I pulled into the parking lot, the engine sputtering as I cut the ignition. The rain drummed on the car roof and I grabbed my duffel bag, making a dash for the hotel's entrance. The worn wooden door creaked open and I stepped into the lobby. The first thing that struck me was the silence. It was an eerie stillness, as if the very air had been stifled by years of abandonment. The reception desk stood before me, its surface cluttered with dusty papers and a tarnished brass bell that had seen better days. Behind the desk sat a middle-aged woman, her eyes hidden behind a pair of wire-framed glasses. Welcome to the silent hotel, she said, her voice barely audible over the rain. How may I assist you? I need a room for the night, I replied, my voice echoing in the empty lobby. She nodded, her movements slow and deliberate. Certainly, sign in here, please. I scribbled my name and contact information on the faded ledger, the ink smudging slightly on the yellowed pages. The woman handed me an old-fashioned key with a metal tag that read, Room 207. Take the stairs to the second floor, she said, her voice monotone. Your room is at the end of the hall. With key in hand, I made my way up the narrow staircase. The dimly lit hallway stretched before me, its threadbare carpet muffling my footsteps. The walls were adorned with faded paintings of idyllic landscapes, their frames crooked and tarnished. A sense of unease settled over me as I approached room 207. Inside the room was a stark contrast to the grandeur of the lobby. The furnishings were outdated and the wallpaper peeled in places. A single lamp cast a feeble glow, revealing the cracks in the ceiling and the stains on the faded carpet. The air was stale and a musty odor hung in the room. I tossed my duffel bag onto the bed and let out a sigh. It wasn't the most inviting place, but it would have to do for the night. I stripped out of my wet clothes and took a quick shower, the lukewarm water providing little comfort. As I settled into bed, the sense of isolation began to creep in. The rain continued its relentless assault on the windows, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was the only guest in the entire hotel. The silence outside was oppressive and I found myself straining to hear any sign of life. Hours passed and I lay in the darkness, unable to sleep. The walls seemed to close in on me and the stillness was suffocating. It was then that I heard it, a faint muffled sound coming from the room next door. It was like a whisper too soft to make out any words. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I strained to listen and the whispering grew slightly louder but it was still unintelligible. It was as if someone was speaking just loud enough to be heard, but not enough to be understood. With a sense of unease, I climbed out of bed and pressed my ear against the wall that separated my room from the mysterious neighbor. The whispering continued, and I realized it was a conversation. A conversation that was happening in hushed tones. I couldn't make out who was speaking or what they were saying, but the tension in the voices was palpable. It was as if they were arguing about something, their words filled with anger and desperation. As I listened, a feeling of unease washed over me. I considered knocking on the wall and asking them to keep it down, but something held me back. It was the feeling that I was intruding on something I shouldn't be a part of, something that was none of my business. I returned to my bed, but sleep was elusive. The whispered conversation next door continued, and my mind raced with thoughts of who could be staying in the room next to mine. Were they in trouble? Should I call the front desk or the police? The hours dragged on and as dawn broke, the whispering finally ceased. 
Exhausted and restless, I drifted into a fitful sleep. When I awoke, the rain had stopped and the room was bathed in soft morning light. I decided to check out and put the strange events of the night behind me. I quickly dressed and headed downstairs to the lobby. To my surprise, the reception desk was empty and there was no sign of the woman who had checked me in. The lobby was still eerily quiet and I felt a growing sense of unease. I approached the front desk and saw the ledger from last night still open, as if it had been abandoned mid-entry. Curiosity got the better of me, and I scanned the recent entries. They were all from the same night, but the names were unfamiliar. Each entry had a timestamp from the early hours of the morning, suggesting they had been made after I returned to my room. Before I could investigate further, the lobby's entrance door swung open with a loud creak, startling me. I turned to see a disheveled man and a woman entering the hotel. Their clothes were rumpled and they both had a wild look in their eyes. Welcome to the silent hotel, the man said, his voice hoarse and strained. I nodded in response, my confusion growing. Is everything okay? The woman exchanged a quick glance with the man before replying. We had a long night, that's all. Just looking for a place to rest. I watched as they approached the reception desk. Their voices hushed as they spoke to the absent woman behind the counter. Their conversation was too quiet for me to hear, but their expressions grew increasingly anxious. Suddenly the woman turned to me, her eyes wide with fear. You should leave this place, she whispered urgently. Get out while you still can. Before I could respond, the man grabbed her arm and pulled her away, disappearing down the hallway. I stood there bewildered and shaken as the words echoed in my mind. With a growing sense of unease, I decided it was time to heed their warning. I turned and headed for the lobby entrance, eager to put the silent hotel behind me. But as I reached for the door handle, I realized it wouldn't budge. Panic surged through me as I tugged at the door with all my strength, but it remained firmly shut. I was trapped. Frantically, I looked around the lobby for an escape. I spotted an old fire exit at the far end, its red exit sign faintly illuminated. I rushed toward it, hoping it would lead me to safety. As I reached the door, I pulled on the handle, praying it would open. To my relief, it did, and I stepped out into the crisp morning air. But my relief was short-lived as I realized where I was, the back of the hotel facing a dense forest that stretched as far as the eye could see. I had no choice but to venture into the woods, my heart pounding with each step. The forest was quiet, and the only sound was the rustling of leaves in the breeze. I had no sense of direction, and every tree and bush seemed to blur together. Hours passed, and I felt a growing sense of desperation. I had no way of knowing if I was moving closer to civilization or deeper into the wilderness. My phone had no signal, and I had left my car behind at the hotel. Just as I was about to give in to despair, I spotted a glimmer of light through the trees. I followed it, stumbling out of the forest and onto a narrow road. A passing motorist stopped to help me and I quickly explained my ordeal. The driver, a kind-hearted woman, offered to take me to the nearest town which was several miles away. As we drove I couldn't shake the feeling that I had narrowly escaped a sinister fate at the Silent Hotel. Months have passed since that night, but the memories of my stay at the Silent Hotel still haunt me. I've done some research trying to uncover the hotel's history but I found nothing about its mysterious guests or the strange occurrences that took place there. The Silent Hotel remains an enigmatic place, a relic of the past with its secrets buried deep within its walls. I may never know what truly happened that night, but one thing is certain. I will never forget the unsettling silence that permeated the air and the chilling whispers that echoed through its halls. To this day, I can't help but wonder if the Silent Hotel still stands, its doors open to unsuspecting travelers, its secrets waiting to be discovered by those who dare to check in. But one thing is for sure, I will never return to find out. It was a journey I had long anticipated, a road trip to the remote countryside far from the demands of my busy city life. My desire for solitude and a chance to reset my frazzled nerves led me to the small, picturesque town of Crestwood. I had heard about a quaint, centuries-old inn nestled among the rolling hills, the Embers Hotel, Little did I know that my decision to stay there would become a haunting experience beyond imagination. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a fiery glow over the winding road as I neared my destination. The evening sky was a brilliant tapestry of reds and purples, 
a stark contrast to the pitch black countryside that lay ahead. My GPS led me onto a narrow forested path and my excitement was tinged with trepidation. Just as I was beginning to doubt the accuracy of the directions, the Embers Hotel emerged from the darkness, an imposing three-story structure framed by centuries-old oak trees. Its stone facade exuded an eerie Gothic charm, while the lit windows promised warmth and comfort. The gravel driveway crunched beneath my tires as I parked my car near the entrance. As I stepped out, a blast of chilly evening air greeted me, carrying with it the scent of rain-soaked earth and the faint rustling of leaves. My footfalls echoed in the quiet courtyard as I approached the entrance. The heavy wooden door swung open with a low, creaking groan, revealing an opulent lobby bathed in soft lamplight. The scent of aged leather and polished wood filled the air, creating an ambience of quiet sophistication. My eyes were drawn to the reception desk, where an elderly gentleman in a well-tailored suit stood his demeanor as dignified as the hotel itself. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Embers Hotel. How may I assist you tonight? His voice was smooth, accentuating the old world charm of the place. I have a reservation, I replied, handing him my identification. He examined my information and offered a polite smile. Of course, Mr. Turner. You're in room 306. Here's your key. The key he handed me was an antique brass piece, cool to the touch. I nodded my thanks and made my way to the grand staircase that led to the upper floors. The staircase was adorned with intricate wrought iron railings, and the carpet beneath my feet was plush and well-worn, testifying to the hotel's storied history. On the third floor, I followed the numbered signs along a dimly lit corridor until I reached room 306. The key turned smoothly in the lock, and the door swung open, revealing a spacious suite adorned with period furniture and rich dark wood paneling. The room was as I had hoped, a blend of classic elegance and modern comfort. I unpacked quickly, and as I settled into the sumptuous armchair near the window, I marveled at the solitude of the place. I was far removed from the noise and distractions of city life, and the tranquility of the countryside had a calming effect on my frayed nerves. Despite the comfort of my surroundings, sleep proved elusive. I tossed and turned, the occasional gust of wind against the windowpane disrupting my restless dreams. The ornate clock on the wall ticked away the hours, echoing through the silent room. It was well past midnight when I heard the first whispers. They were soft and indistinct, like a faint rustling of leaves. I lay in bed, straining my ears to catch the source of the sound. The wind outside had ceased and an eerie stillness had settled over the hotel. The whispers continued, growing slightly louder but still incomprehensible. It was as though someone was engaged in a conversation just beyond the walls of my room. I contemplated dismissing it as a figment of my imagination, a consequence of fatigue. But the persistence of the voices unsettled me. With curiosity overcoming my initial reluctance, I rose from the bed and pressed my ear against the wall that separated my room from the one next door. The conversation became clearer, though the words remained muffled and indistinct. As I strained to listen, the urgency in the voices became apparent. It was not a casual conversation, but rather a heated exchange, filled with frustration and anxiety. The feeling that I had intruded on something private gnawed at me, but the words were still unintelligible. The exchange continued for what felt like hours the voices rising and falling in intensity. The person in the neighboring room seemed to plead, while the other remained steadfast and resolute. There was a palpable tension in the air and the anxiety I felt grew with each passing moment. The feeling of intrusion weighed heavily on me, and I considered knocking on the wall and asking them to keep it down. But fear, or perhaps a strange sense of respect for their privacy, held me back. Instead, I lay back in bed, my heart pounding, trying to drown out the whispers with a pillow over my head. Morning arrived, and with it, the cessation of the mysterious whispers. As the first light of day filtered through the curtains, I realized that I had spent a sleepless night in the Embers Hotel. Despite the lack of rest, a strange excitement coursed through me. There was a mystery to be unraveled, a puzzle hidden within the walls of this grand old establishment. I decided to start my exploration with breakfast in the hotel's dining room. The room was bathed in soft, golden light, and the polished mahogany tables were set with pristine white tablecloths and gleaming silverware. 
The elderly waiter who served me was impeccably dressed and carried himself with the grace of a seasoned professional. Good morning, sir. How did you find your first night at the Embers Hotel? He inquired with a knowing smile. Peaceful yet intriguing, I replied, my curiosity getting the better of me. Tell me who are the other guests staying here? The waiter's expression remained composed, but a flicker of unease passed through his eyes. We have a few guests, sir, but the Embers Hotel values its guests' privacy above all else. We do not disclose personal information about our patrons. I accepted his response, though I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of mystery surrounding the hotel and its guests. Over breakfast, I observed the other diners, an elderly couple engrossed in their newspapers, a solitary writer scribbling away in a journal, and a pair of hikers planning their day's excursion. After breakfast, I ventured into the sprawling library, a treasure trove of ancient books and vintage magazines. The atmosphere was hushed, with the occasional crackling of a log in the grand fireplace providing a comforting background noise. As I perused the dusty tomes, I couldn't shake the feeling that the library held secrets of its own. The hotel's history intrigued me, and I approached the reception desk later that morning to inquire about its past. The elderly gentleman from the previous night was now replaced by a middle-aged woman with warm yet cautious eyes. I'm fascinated by the history of this place, I began. Could you tell me more about the Embers Hotel and its past guests? She regarded me for a moment as if considering her response carefully. The Embers Hotel has a storied history that spans several centuries. Many notable individuals have graced its halls over the years, seeking solace, inspiration, or escape from the world. However, our policy has always been to respect the privacy of our guests, both past and present. We do not divulge personal details or anecdotes. I couldn't hide my disappointment, though her words only fueled my curiosity further. With little information to go on, I resolved to explore the hotel on my own, to uncover the enigma of the Embers Hotel. Days turned into weeks, and my fascination with the Embers Hotel deepened. I spent my time wandering its labyrinthine corridors, admiring its antique furnishings, and absorbing the atmosphere that seemed to seep from every crevice. The whispers from the neighboring room had become a constant presence, a reminder of the mystery that hung in the air. It was during one of my explorations that I stumbled upon an unassuming door on the fourth floor. The door was slightly ajar and a soft light spilled from within. A plaque on the door read, The Embers Room, Private. Intrigued, I pushed the door open gently, revealing a room that was unlike any other in the hotel. The walls were adorned with photographs, newspaper clippings, and handwritten notes. There were mementos, too, a collection of vintage items, each with its own story to tell. As I examined the photographs, I realized that they were all of the same person, a striking woman with dark, enigmatic eyes. She appeared in various settings, from glamorous parties to solitary walks in the countryside. Newspaper articles hinted at her wealth, her mysterious disappearance, and the enduring fascination that her story had held for the public. The room was a shrine to this unknown woman, and I couldn't help but wonder about her connection to the Embers Hotel. What had drawn her here, and why had she left behind such a detailed record of her life? My curiosity had reached its peak and I was determined to uncover the truth. I began researching the woman's identity, scouring the internet for any information that might shed light on her story. The more I discovered, the more I became convinced that her connection to the Embers Hotel was a key to unraveling the mystery that had captivated me. Weeks turned into months as I delved deeper into the mystery of the Embers Hotel. My research led me down a rabbit hole of historical records, newspaper archives, and interviews with locals. It was during one of these interviews that I met an elderly gentleman named Mr. Simmons, a lifelong resident of Crestwood. You're interested in the Embers Hotel, are you? Mr. Simmons said, a twinkle in his eye. Well, you've certainly chosen a fascinating subject. I've lived here all my life and I've heard my fair share of stories about that place. I leaned in, eager to hear more. Tell me everything you know. Mr. Simmons began with tales of the hotel's early days, when it had been a haven for artists, writers, and intellectuals seeking refuge from the chaos of the world. He spoke of lavish parties, passionate affairs, and the lingering echoes of creativity that still permeated the building's walls. But it was in the 1940s that things took a darker turn, 
Mr. Simmons continued, his voice dropping to a hushed tone. There was a woman, you see, a woman who had it all, beauty, wealth, and fame. She was a regular guest at the Embers Hotel, always accompanied by her entourage of admirers. As Mr. Simmons spoke, I couldn't help but think of the photographs and mementos in the Embers room. It seemed that this woman had been the central figure in the hotel's history. Rumors began to circulate about the woman, Mr. Simmons went on. Whispers of a tragic past, of a secret that haunted her every step. It was said that she came to the Embers Hotel seeking solace, but that solace remained elusive. I leaned closer, my heart pounding. What happened to her? Mr. Simmons hesitated as if deciding whether to reveal the darkest part of the story. One night she disappeared, he said finally, his voice barely above a whisper. No one knew where she went or why. The hotel staff claimed she checked out, but her entourage was left behind, bewildered and distraught. I couldn't hide my shock. What could have driven her to leave so abruptly? That's the question that's haunted Crestwood for decades, Mr. Simmons replied. Some say she discovered a terrible secret, something that shook her to her core. Others believe she was pursued by a relentless force, a force that sought to claim her. The pieces of the puzzle were falling into place. The whispers in the neighboring room, the photographs, the embers room itself, all were connected to the mysterious woman who had vanished from the hotel. Determined to uncover the truth, I returned to the embers hotel that evening. The whispers had grown louder, more urgent, and I knew that the time had come to confront the enigma that had drawn me in. As I stood before the door to the embers room, a sense of trepidation washed over me. The photographs on the wall seemed to watch, their silent presence a testament to the mystery that had brought me here. With a deep breath, I pushed the door open and stepped inside. The soft lamplight cast a warm glow over the room, illuminating the photographs and mementos that adorned the walls. I approached the photographs, studying each one as if it held the key to the woman's story. It was then that I noticed something unusual, a photograph that I hadn't seen before. It depicted the woman standing in front of a grand, ornate mirror, her reflection distorted by the aged glass. The mirror itself was a work of art, its intricate frame adorned with symbols and carvings. Curiosity peaked. I examined the mirror more closely. It was unlike any I had ever seen, and the symbols etched into its surface seemed to tell a story of their own. My fingers traced the lines, and as I did, a sense of unease washed over me. The mirror was more than a mere decorative piece. It was a portal to another world, a gateway to a place that defied logic and reason. With trembling hands, I reached out and touched the glass, feeling a surge of energy course through me. In an instant, I was transported to a realm of darkness and uncertainty. The room around me vanished, replaced by a shadowy landscape of shifting shapes and ethereal whispers. The air was thick with anticipation, and the woman from the photograph stood before me, her eyes filled with sorrow. You shouldn't have come here, she whispered, her voice a haunting echo. This place is not what it seems. I tried to speak to ask her about the secrets of the Embers Hotel, but my words were lost in the void. The woman reached out, her fingers brushing against my hand, and in that moment I understood. The Embers Hotel was a place of secrets, a place where the past and present converged, where the whispers of history lingered in the air. The woman had discovered the truth, a truth that defied explanation, a truth that had driven her to vanish from the world. With a sense of urgency, I stepped back from the mirror, the room around me returning to its former state. The photographs, the mementos, the enigma of the Embers Hotel, they were all pieces of a puzzle that I could never hope to solve. I left the Embers Hotel that night, my mind in turmoil. The whispers had faded, and the mysteries of the hotel remained unsolved. As I drove away, I couldn't help but wonder if the truth would ever be revealed. Months have passed since that fateful night, and I've returned to my busy city life. The memories of the Embers Hotel continue to haunt me, a reminder of the enigma that remains unsolved. The woman from the photographs, the whispers in the neighboring room, the mysterious mirror, all are part of a story that defies explanation. The Embers Hotel stands as a testament to the unending mysteries of the world, a place where history and secrets converge, a place where the past is never truly forgotten. 
It is a place that will forever remain in my memory. A place where the enigma lingers like a whisper in the night. And so the Embers Hotel remains, its secrets hidden within its walls, waiting for the next curious soul to unlock the mysteries that lie within. It is a place where history and mystery converge, a place where the past and present are forever intertwined. As I reflect on my journey, I realize that some mysteries are meant to remain unsolved. Some secrets are meant to remain hidden. The Embers Hotel is one such place, a place where the enigma of the past continues to beckon, a place where the whispers of history will forever echo in the corridors of time. It was a crisp autumn day when I received the peculiar invitation. An ornate envelope adorned with an elegant wax seal arrived at my doorstep. Its contents revealed an invitation to an exclusive gathering at a remote hotel, an event shrouded in mystery and intrigue. The Hotel Arcane, as it was named, was nestled deep within the Appalachian Mountains. The invitation detailed its location, a winding road, a hidden path, and a place that seemed to exist only in whispers. There was no explanation of why I had been chosen, no mention of who the other guests might be. The invitation bore only a date and time, October 31, Saint 10 p.m. Curiosity got the better of me. I couldn't resist the allure of the unknown, and the idea of a secluded gathering in a mysterious hotel piqued my interest. The days passed and my anticipation grew. I packed my bags, drove to the nearby town, and from there, followed the directions into the heart of the Appalachian wilderness. As the sun dipped below the horizon, I found myself on a desolate road, the GPS guiding me further into the wilderness. The thick canopy of trees overhead blocked out the moonlight, creating an eerie darkness that surrounded me. I could feel the chill in the air, a foreboding sensation that seemed to whisper of the secrets hidden in the mountains. Finally, I reached the end of the road as per the instructions. There, barely visible in the darkness, was a narrow path leading into the woods. I parked my car and followed the path, my footsteps echoing in the silence of the forest. The path led to a clearing and there, bathed in an ethereal glow, stood the Hotel Arcane. It was an imposing structure, its dark stone walls towering above me. The flickering candlelight in the windows created an otherworldly ambiance, casting long shadows that danced in the night. I approached the entrance and the massive wooden doors swung open as if by their own volition. The warm light from within beckoned me inside, and I stepped into the lobby of the Hotel Arcane. The lobby was unlike any hotel I had ever seen. It was a blend of old-world charm and modern luxury, with plush velvet sofas, crystal chandeliers, and antique oil paintings adorning the walls. The room was bustling with guests, their hushed conversations and laughter creating an atmosphere of camaraderie. The hotel staff, dressed in impeccably tailored suits, greeted me with polite smiles as if they had been expecting me. They guided me to the registration desk, where a woman with a serene demeanor awaited. Welcome to the Hotel Arcane, she said, her voice soft and melodic. I trust your journey was uneventful. May I have your name, please? I provided my name and she handed me a brass key with an intricate design, a key that bore no room number. Instead, she offered a cryptic message. Your room will be revealed to you in time, she said, her eyes holding a secret I could not decipher. For now, please enjoy the gathering. It will commence shortly. With that, I was free to explore the lobby, where guests in elegant attire mingled, their conversations laced with curiosity about the mysterious event that had brought them here. The air was charged with an energy I couldn't quite comprehend. Among the guests, I encountered a diverse group of individuals. A reclusive novelist, a renowned archaeologist, a celebrated pianist, and a detective known for solving unsolvable mysteries. They were all in attendance. Their presence added an air of mystique to the gathering, leaving me both fascinated and slightly apprehensive. The clock on the wall struck 10 p.m., and as if on cue, the gathering hushed. The woman from the registration desk stood at the center of the lobby, her presence commanding attention. Ladies and gentlemen, she began, her voice resonating through the room. Welcome to the Hotel Arcane. Tonight, you are among those who share a thirst for the enigmatic, a passion for the unknown, we have gathered to embark on a journey, one that will challenge the boundaries of knowledge and perception. The guests leaned forward, their curiosity piqued. 
I found myself caught in the anticipation that hung in the air. The woman continued, In the heart of this hotel lies a chamber, a chamber that holds the answers to questions you have yet to ask. But this chamber is not easily found. It will test your wits, your intuition, and your courage. It will push you to the limits of your understanding. A hush fell over the gathering as her words sank in. The challenge that lay ahead was not what any of us had expected. She motioned to the grand staircase that led to the upper floors. The chamber awaits, but you must earn your place within it. You have until midnight to uncover its location. Those who succeed will be granted access to its secrets. Those who fail. Her voice trailed off, leaving the consequences unspoken. With that, the guests scattered, each one determined to be the first to unlock the mystery of the Hotel Arcane. I followed the detective, drawn by the aura of confidence that surrounded him. We began our search on the third floor, exploring the dimly lit corridors and inspecting every room. It became evident that the hotel itself was a labyrinth, its architecture designed to confuse and disorient. Hidden doors concealed passages and rooms that seemed to shift their locations. Each step took us deeper into the puzzle. As the minutes ticked away, frustration began to mount. The detective and I were not alone in our quest. The reclusive novelist, the celebrated pianist, and the archaeologist, all were engaged in their own search, each one just as determined as the next. Time seemed to blur as we scoured the hotel. Midnight was fast approaching and desperation took hold. The Hotel Arcane revealed itself to be a place of maddening complexity, where the boundaries between reality and illusion blurred. It was then that I noticed something peculiar, a series of symbols etched into the door frames of certain rooms. The symbols were cryptic, a language of their own. With a sense of intuition, I traced the symbols with my fingers, and the door to one particular room swung open. Inside, I found a chamber unlike any other in the hotel. It was an opulent library, its walls lined with ancient tomes and arcane artifacts. In the center of the room stood an ornate pedestal, upon which rested an ancient tome, its pages filled with inscrutable text. The detective and I approached the tome, our excitement building. Could this be the key to unraveling the mystery of the Hotel Arcane? We began to decipher the text, piecing together a narrative that defied comprehension. As the last stroke of midnight resounded through the hotel, a strange sensation washed over us. The air grew thick and the room seemed to shift. The walls closed in, the ceiling descended, and the symbols on the doorframe began to glow. Panic set in as we realized we were trapped. The room had transformed into a nightmarish puzzle, a challenge that defied logic. Desperate, we tried to decipher the symbols, to unlock the room's secrets, but time was running out. As the room continued to shift and contract, I caught a glimpse of the detective's determined expression, his mind racing to find a solution. It was then that a voice echoed in my mind, a whisper a hint of a solution hidden within the text. With renewed determination, I began to rearrange the symbols, aligning them in a sequence that matched the text of the ancient tome. The room responded, the walls retracting, the ceiling rising. We had unlocked the chamber's secrets, but the ordeal had left us shaken. We emerged from the room to find the other guests in a state of confusion. Some had succeeded in their quests, while others had failed. The woman from the registration desk awaited us in the lobby, her expression inscrutable. You have passed the first test, she said, her voice betraying no emotion. You have earned your place within the chamber. With that, she led us to a grand door at the end of the lobby. The door swung open to reveal a chamber that defied description. The chamber was filled with ancient artifacts, each one imbued with a strange energy. Arcane symbols covered the walls and the air was thick with an otherworldly presence. At the center of the room stood a massive tome, its pages filled with secrets of the cosmos. The woman motioned to the tome. This is the Codex Arcana, a repository of knowledge beyond human comprehension. It holds the answers to questions you have yet to ask, the mysteries of the universe, and the enigma of the Hotel Arcane. We were given the opportunity to peruse the tome to delve into its secrets. The knowledge it contained was vast and profound, a testament to the complexity of the universe. It was a revelation, a glimpse into the mysteries that had drawn us here. As we poured over the pages, a sense of awe washed over us. The Hotel Arcane had not been a mere gathering place. 
It was a repository of knowledge, a gateway to the unknown. The woman's words echoed in my mind. The hotel challenged our understanding, pushed us to the limits of our perception, and rewarded us with enlightenment. Days turned into weeks as I immersed myself in the knowledge of the Codex Arcana. The revelations it offered were both profound and unsettling, expanding my understanding of the cosmos and the mysteries that lay beyond. As the time came for my departure from the Hotel Arcane, I couldn't help but wonder about the other guests. What had drawn them to this place and what had they discovered in their quests? The enigma of the hotel remained, a puzzle that defied explanation. As I left the hotel and returned to the world beyond, I knew that the Hotel Arcane would forever remain in my memory. It was a place of mystery and revelation, a place where the boundaries of reality and illusion blurred, a place where the unknown beckoned. The enigma of the Hotel Arcane would continue to haunt me, a reminder of the limitless possibilities that lay beyond our understanding. It was a place that defied explanation, a place where the secrets of the universe were revealed to those willing to embark on a journey into the unknown. And so I left the Hotel Arcane behind, knowing that its mysteries would remain with me. A testament to the allure of the enigmatic. A reminder that there are truths beyond our comprehension, waiting to be discovered by those who dare to seek them.